with each year adding a few extra individuals to the great bustard population in Britain. The whole age structure and the social structure takes a step forward each time. The older birds, now five, six or seven years old, are able to teach the youngsters their methods for survival. This is a long-term project. It was always scheduled to take at least 10 years. With each passing year, the project staff are able to fine-tune their techniques. There was no known recipe for creating a new great busted population. Each time something happens, we learn from it, and the next year we hope to do a little better. There have been a couple of big milestones for the project. In 2007, it was noticed one of the females was acting in a very secretive and slightly unusual manner. After extensive searching and a lot of careful observations, we found we had the first wild laid great busted eggs in Britain for over 170 years. Sadly, those didn't hatch. And the reason for this was male great bustards take longer before they are old enough to be fertile. That happened in 2009, and that's when we had the first wild hatch great busted chicks in Great Britain. For those of us who had spent many hours, and many years even, translocating great busted chicks from one side of Europe to the other, to see for the first time a wild chick, no wing tags, no radios, out there in the wild with its natural mother was a real thrill and a thrill for everyone involved in the project. The past couple of hundred years has seen the range of the Great Busted in Europe decline considerably. But the past 10 or 20 years have seen something of a reversal in the fortunes of the Great Busted. These advances in Great Busted conservation have come from non-governmental organisations and also from government and European Union-led projects. In 2010, one of the project partners, the RSPB, was successful in its application to the European Union for funding within the Life Plus project. Now this grant has made a huge difference to the management of the project, to the operations of the project, and it's also gone a large way to rather change some of the political problems that the project had in the early years. Tracy Williams is the project manager for the Life Plus project. The Life project is funded by the EU Life Biodiversity Programme and the main project partners are the RSPB, the Great Bustard Group, the University of Bath and Natural England. This is a five-year LIFE project and it forms part of the wider European network of LIFE projects for conservation of the Great Bustard, such as Hungary, Germany and Austria. And as part of our project, we're able to go and visit these projects and see what they're doing and learn from them. Within the new LIFE Plus project, we will bury more than 30 kilometres of medium voltage power lines. And this is really a historical picture, what we see now, because in a few years, we shouldn't be able to see this medium voltage power line anymore. The core of all our conservation is, of course, landscape management. If we have an, not an intact landscape, we, we cannot uh, save great bastards. The work of the Great Bustard Group is the foundation on which the rest of the project has been built. But with new resources, new staff, with new ideas, the project really has taken some huge step forward. There are many important actions within the LIFE project, such as seeking a secure release site. So we're working with farmers and landowners to identify places that have good habitats that we can securely release the birds, and also to help farmers to source funding for putting in the correct habitat on the ground for great bustards through the agri-environment schemes. The Life Plus project is having a tremendously positive impact on all aspects of the Great Bustard reintroduction. But its real benefits go even wider than that. There are many other species which benefit from the habitat measures in place for the Great Bustard.
One of the new developments made possible by the extra resources and support of the Life Press project was for the first time I was able to bring eggs back from Russia as opposed to importing chicks. Now we know in the wild, great bustards have a very close relationship and a relationship over a long period of time with the mother. Now here in England, we've tried to replicate that close relationship and the birds indeed have their own mother. Pristina Salers joined the Great Bustard Project team with the specific role of being the mother to our UK hatched Great Bustards. Being a stepmom to a group of bustards is really rewarding because you get to spend a lot of time with them, hang out with them, knowing that they see you as a reference and as a safe figure as the mother. We are able to take them for walks in the big field by the pen and that allows me to show them as a mum what foods are good for them. So we go through different patches of lucerne and mustard and oilseed rape and I peck it and feed it to them and they get to know what's good for them. They also have lots of insects that they peck for themselves, which is good. And they also get to exercise and get stronger, which is always the best. As these youngsters are growing, they can look out onto the landscapes of Wiltshire and they can see wild great bustards flying and living in the area around them. Christina's work is now done and it's very much up to the young great bustards and the older birds we hope they will link up with as they try and find their own way in the big wide world. It's not realistic to hope every released bird to survive through to adulthood. But we do know from the early years of the successes in the project that some will make it through. And with the increased resources the Life Plus project has brought us and the increased knowledge and the new ideas that we have, that the number of birds surviving each year will increase. And those that make it through will in turn have the chance to build the next generation of British Great Bustards. <laughs>